Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. So uh, I will let me say just a few words to open our meeting, and then I will uh, conduct our usual customary business that I've too often forgotten, um, and then turn it over to to our co-director, Cheryl Kauser. Um, so as most of you know, as we almost as we speak, um, our governor is presenting her first budget. The budget meeting was meant to start at 10 a.m. I am myself just uh, circling back to see when the budget materials will be officially released. Um, obviously, as they, they're released, our work will begin in the analysis of how that affects our work, uh, uh, work both as a Board of Elections and the Public Campaign Finance Board. Um, an analysis of the budget proposal will be provided to all of you at the next board meeting when we have time to properly digest it. In our budget proposal, we requested that to achieve a full-time equivalent staff of 64 people by the end of the year. And we also proposed a non-personal service budget that would provide the necessary resource to, resources excuse me, to position us to develop software applications and systems to effectively and efficiently administer the public math program. That is obviously um, the most demanding thing that uh, concerns the attention of our team. Um, and myself and Commissioner Kolb, um, day in and day out. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't we can't give you um, a fuller statement until we have time to wrestle with the proposed budget when it's released later today. With those opening words, let me, as always, um, ask for our first order of business. That is to adopt the circulated proposed minutes of our last meeting. Has everybody received those proposed minutes? Yes. Yeah. Do I have a motion to adopt the proposed minutes? So move. Second. Uh, hearing a second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing no opposition, the minutes are adopted. With that, I turn it over to our co-director, Cheryl Kauser, for the unit update from our from our combined teams. All yours. Thank you, Commissioner. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So this, um, my unit report will be an overview of our activities since uh, the December 17th board meeting. And our unit continues to work on multiple tracks concurrently. Um, as Commissioner Yankus stated, the executive budget proposal will be released today. Um, the governor had a presentation at 11 a.m. and we will review and analyze the proposal and resources allocated to our board. And, and this update will continue to have um, the different breakouts that we've reported in the past meetings. The first one is project management. Our unit continues to maintain a very aggressive time frame to meet a number of project management goals. By December 31st, we completed a high level workflows of our business processes. And upon continued review of those workflows, we've added a few more business processes. And now we're on to looking at the functional requirements for each one, which generally speaking, that's drilling down from the high level workflow to step by step requirements. We continue to hold weekly senior executive meetings with our co directors, our co executive directors. NYSTEC, ITU, and PCFB staff. And as reported, we are coordinating with several other state agencies, either in the payment process or about the validation of data. We've met with the comptroller's office, the statewide financial system. We have reached out to JCOP, um, and we'll be reaching out to the New York City Lobbying Bureau. And this will be done to coordinate the validation of eligibility requirements on contributor data. Um, as you're aware, um, we reported out in October and December, one step we're taking to inform our decision around project software applications and technology, the unit had issued a request for information for technology solutions for a web-based platform. Generally, our objective around the RFI was to get input from potential vendors on technology technology solutions to implement a web-based platform that will provide information, education, data entry, 
business rules, auditing and reporting. Um, and it looked at, you know, one or more different solutions to provide a very transparent platform for a variety of our stakeholders in a way that's creative, compelling, accessible, easy to use, and easy to understand. From that RFI, we received 29 submissions and we participated in four demonstrations that were completed by last week. Under comparative research, the state of Florida Division of Elections provided us with a demonstration of its public campaign finance system. The Florida public campaign finance system generally covers four offices and during its last election cycle had roughly a dozen candidates. Um, and their auditing provisions we found to be largely manual. manual. So this our finding on the review of other state and local jurisdictions continues to be that it does not appear that any other of the states or localities that have programs as robust as what we need them to be. Uh, most filing software and audit capability appear to be on older platforms and are largely manual. Generally, the size of our program and what we'll be handling will, will, use, um, will require the use of automation and workflows that handle large volume of data in small periods of time. Um, and then in comparative research, we're also compiling a public campaign finance user group. Uh, in the future, we will hold a session to discuss the program, what we're looking to do, and where we are. But then we would hold, host future update sessions and sessions at point of time where public reporting and testing can be conducted. Space planning. Um, in August 2021, the Division of Budget provided the PCFB with a total of 64 seats. And this would be for this year, 2022. Um, there is an awareness that that number will be exceeded next year. Uh, the plan was for the fifth floor to be renovated and the unit and the state board um, will not be fully situated with the renovation or have a defined space uh, due to construction, which will take a year or two. Uh, we received lean space that was allocated on the first floor for the state board and that space is being wired and built out with cubicles right now. And really the co-executive directors are, are lead on this process, but I wanted to give an update to you. In terms of equipment, we have worked with our IT department to put together an equipment package to procure um, equipment for existing backfield and new employees. We submitted an order for laptops, desktops, computers, monitors in August. We are still waiting on the desktops and monitors to arrive due to the supply chain issue. Uh, but right now we have currently what we need and we have, we have um, enough for future staff. So we're just waiting on that right now. In terms of staffing, co-director Bill McCann had, had advised that he has submitted his resignation. The timing of, of that resignation has not yet been determined. Um, as the timing has not been determined, um, I will say that I enjoy working with Bill over the last eight months in public campaign finance, and I've enjoyed working with him over the last 12 years. He brings uh, a wealth of knowledge to our table, and we have a great working relationship, and I know he'll do great in any future endeavor. Um, as discussed in the last state board meeting in December, our chief information officer, Bill Cross, retired. And today, uh, we welcome Michael Haber as a new CIO. It's his first day on the job. Welcome. Thank you. Um, in terms of staffing, we, we continue to endure a delay in promoting Kate Orsino, the Deputy Director, as Deputy Director. Uh, she was appointed on July 27th, and unfortunately the process to actually pay her has not occurred through the Division of Budget. There are weekly meetings. This is a top priority, and um, not only does Kate deserve to be paid back to July 27th, it's also holding up two compliance backfills and really starting to impact, and has been impacting our workflow. Uh, and then we are working with the Civil Service Commission to classify two assistant PIO positions and 12 candidate liaison positions, six for 2022 
and six for 2023. Todd or Bob, would you have anything to add? Um, on the on the budget, I mean, we are expecting to analyze that today. I mean, the division of budget had gone back and forth as to they did not disagree with the additional funds we had asked for, but the location of it originally was going to the additional ones would have been dedicated towards software and would have they thought was going to go into a um, you know a capital capital fund. Thank you. <laughs> But now they think it might go back to our regular budget, which either way didn't matter to us. Actually, in the regular budget, it gives us a little more flexibility, so that we'll wait and see. Um, you know, uh, when you talk about the user groups, I mean, that's something that we have done previously with our campaign finance software. We found that to be very successful to get the input of treasurers who had done, you know, who just manually do the work. And then we've also reached out um, for on the web presence to uh, media and interest groups. Once we are at a point, and Cheryl's correct, we're not at that point yet because I don't have mock-ups to show them, but the plan is we'll still have to put, the, you know, to do demonstrations on that at some point in the future when we have those mock-ups. Um, we're hopeful with Kate's appointment. We're trying a different tack this time by just putting it in. Um, uh, it went in and we're kind of waiting to see. It's been, I admit the frustration has had uh, a domino effect because of the appointments that are behind that. So we're just hopeful that that gets, gets put together. Anything else, Bob? I think that's uh, covered everything. Any questions, commissioners? Yeah, I have one. Is there a particular individual uh, or who have we talked to in budget to try to break uh, through these holdups on the uh, hiring process? I mean, July, I mean, you're, you're really talking about six months here, which is seems to be ridiculous. And so uh, is there a particular person that's holding up uh, the decision-making process? Uh, have we reached out to Robert Mojica, the budget director, uh, just to see uh, where the where the holdups are or what the what the issues are? Have we done any of that? Um, we we have a biweekly meeting with DOB. We have raised it to our team. They have raised it to the director several times. We're not really sure. It, it has to do with a backdating issue, but they were able to correct that, for example, uh, for co-director Kauser's position and others. So we're really unsure at this point as um, Todd said we did put it through, and we did tell budget that we put it through. So we're waiting to see if that gets snagged in the system or it goes through, and we'll probably know that Sweet. this week. Um, by Friday, we should know if the change will take effect in, in their next paycheck. Um, it, it's frustrating. We have not only we have two bad fills, but one in particular is someone coming from the outside and. We expected him to start on November 11th. He has now been offered another position, really wants to come here, but I think we're running out of time with him. And uh, we continue to raise it. We've also raised it with the governor's office, with our liaison there. And I know that there are several people working on it, but that's the only update we can really give you. You know, Commissioner, we, we uh, if I'm not mistaken, Doug Ugham's check me out. We we have the right to appoint our own people and put them on. Well, unlike a lot of other agencies in, in the government, we've not exercised that power. No one wants to start a battle and lose a war. But I think that a discussion within that framework with the second floor is a good one to have. Because there are some technical issues like, uh, you know, getting the paperwork done and all that and so on, and maybe they need a month to do that. But if, if my experience with governments is they hold a position because they want to get the savings, you, you do that with 10 jobs and you do this, and then you get all the rigmarole. And they don't want to do it for a particular department because they'll, every other department would like the same thing. But we are different, and we do have different powers in terms of appointments. And I think we should have that conversation in terms of laying out a sequence of a month, a month and a half, 
where there's an estoppel situation at the end of that, and we just put the person on and they have to pay. But we should have that conversation. We, we can't go on like this. Anyone want to start a war? <laughs> I don't, I don't think, I, I think that's not an appropriate way to describe it. There's no reason for war. It's about either you do your job or you don't. And if the Hochul administration and the budget uh, department um, has got specific uh, parameters why they're not uh, moving the paperwork, I mean, a month is one thing. Six months is, is totally inept. And, um, you know, budget shenanigans or budget shenanigans, we, we're all familiar with them. Uh, but this is really holding up the ability for the department to move forward and uh, uh, complete its mission on the public campaign finance board. So this is a matter of of trying to do our job or the staff to be able to do their job. And they're, ho they're potentially holding up and delaying the entire PCFB uh, program. So I think it, it's not a battle or it's not a war. It's just calling people out to get their jobs done. And if we if we have to go to the governor or or if echo has to reach out to the governor or to robert mohica to get better answers then that's what we should do i mean <clears throat> again one month or maybe even six weeks that's one thing but going back to july and continuing to not really give us a straight answer or give our, our, our folks a straight answer is unacceptable and i think we need to be more demanding of and it's not a war it's just holding people accountable and i think we need to raise the voices a little bit uh, with uh, with the governor's office uh, and also uh, Robert Mojica, who's the budget director, to get better answers. Uh, this has just gone on too long. This is a this is a conversation that we've had and a discussion we've had for seven years. Look, and I'm well, comments, your comments are very similar to the comments that have been made and the attempts that have been made. And it's and, more and, than seven years. I mean, well, that's still as I've been, been on. Yeah. But the one and only time I ever called Governor Spitzer was after the budget director was uh, holding up. I forget whose appointment it was now. I think it was Tom Connolly's, but it had been 18 months. And um, and everybody had told me that there was an approval, except that the budget director wouldn't sign the final paper even though the governor's office had said that they'd instructed them to do it. Um, and uh, 45 minutes after I spoke with the governor, the appointment went through. So, um, but that's the last time. And that was uh, what, 12 years ago now, more. Um, so I, I, I think that uh, the commissioner is right. We need to escalate this, that uh, uh, Kristen and Todd need to contact uh, Mujica directly. And, uh, and then um, those of us need to uh, escalate with the governor's office if that's not going to resolve it. And I think six months, I agree with the commissioner, six months is just it's no longer um, a bureaucracy. Um, Look, and I'm, I'm happy to join voices with at whatever point it's helpful, including speaking to the governor. I think I won't add much, but just to say, not only is it holding back our actual work, but you know, it should be noted, it's just an unreasonable amount of uncertainty for real people in their lives, right? I mean, you know, these aren't just abstractions. These are people whose lives have this uncertainty unnecessarily hanging over them. We will follow up with the project director. And and let us know, you know, that if you don't get uh, a response from um, Mr. Mujica within uh, a week, then I think we need to escalate this by calling his boss. Understood. So that would conclude our unit update. Um, I don't believe we have any old business. 
nor do we have any new business, and we do not need an executive session at this time. Another meeting at this I, really quickly before we set another meeting, are there any other questions floating around that uh, myself or Commissioner Kolb can answer? Any? I want to just make sure we collect questions if if they're out there. Or obviously our co-directors, more importantly. All right, go ahead. Let's yeah, let's let's calendar then. Um, we are. Considering working the next meeting into the schedule to match the Election Commissioners Association Conference, but it's not set in stone yet. So if we could get back to this shortly, we will contact you all and come up with a date. Right, because if you remember, they were originally going to meet this week, um, and we planned on making presentations in person. They have now shifted that to the March 1st through the 4th, uh, same location here in Albany. Um, but we're not sure if there's been any changes to the agenda to try to work around where we could fit a meeting in. Um, because well, the first, we... the first day doesn't work. Uh, I, I would not be available, and I believe Commissioner for the State Board, I don't believe Commissioner Casale is available at this time, from what I understand. So how about Thursday, March 3rd? Um, that would probably be the day that we are presenting. Um, oh, possibly March second, but oh, I, uh, right, I got it wrong. I uh, so f how about Friday, March fourth? Shall we pencil that in, and then you can get back to us when you do some checkup on the shape of the actual Albany meeting? What's your Friday sure. schedule like, Commissioner? Mine is fine. Thank you for asking. Friday works for me. Friday works for me too. All good here. Fine I would just me. say that it'd be more convenient for me if we did it at 10 a.m. rather than noon, just because I'll already be in Albany. Um, but noon would be fine also on Friday. On Friday, 10 a.m. would be fine for me. Yeah, early is fine with me, too. I'm good. Me, too. Okay. So, tentatively, Friday, March 4th at 10 a.m. Okay. And you'll let us know if, um, if that still looks good when you do some digging. Is that right? Yes, we will. Correct. Uh, we've already been asked, but I believe there's neither any new business nor old business. If everybody agrees, then I think I can invite a motion to close. A motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you with that. Uh, we'll close this part of the meeting and I'll wish you, uh, Fair sailing.